All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. A little bit different in today's video. Um, I got my property here up on my iPad where I draw, um, you know, plans and stuff for clients. This is my specific property where I killed the buck 210 this year. And I want to show you exactly what we did to, you know, to get him killed. And it was really, it was a weird farm. It was the first year we hunted it. It was a really weird situation. Uh, we had some failures with some uh, food plots because of the farmer um, that killed it. Uh, he accidentally sprayed it. But um, I want to run this over with you real quick. And I'm going to put this up on the screen somewhere up in here. And I'll put myself down in a corner so you guys will be able to see this. And we're going to run through this. It may be a little bit longer of a video, but I feel like it could help you um, in the future when you design, you know, plan for yourself or, or you know, if you hire somebody. But I'm going to give you some of the pros of this property and some of the cons. And we're going to run over this on the screen right now. So basically inside the red here is our property and if you let's put it about right there now this is the uh, right here with this x that's the landowner's house when we come in through the driveway we would actually come in right here and we would park somewhere right here now the con of this property is as you can probably see it has zero access there's no way to maneuver around this property really without spooking deer. All this here is all ag inside this red here. This year over here was beans. Over here was corn. Okay, so when you're walking and the only way the road is right here. So when you walk down this road to access anywhere on this property, you're just spooking the deer. Anything that's in the beans, you're spooking them. Anything that's in the corn, you're probably spooking them. Um, it's just very difficult to access. So our plan, here's what our plan was. Um, our plan was to have food plots right here. This is a food plot. And this was a food plot, okay? Now, on this property, I will say it was probably almost a better idea not to have food plots, honestly. That way, when you're not walking back to the back to get into the woods, you're not walking past the food to spook the deer. But our plan was to have these food plots here, which we did. They grew very well in bombshell from the main outdoors. We made a screen of Egyptian wheat here and here, okay? That was to hide those food plots back in there to screen them off for our access to help a little bit. And also our plan was to stick ground blinds in those, in those screening to bow hunt these food plots. That way we technically never had to enter into the woods to hunt. But the problem was the farmer, when he planted his beans and corn and he came back later on the spray, he sprayed our Egyptian wheat and killed it by accident. Not his fault. I went, well, it is his fault, but it was an accident. Um, I came back in later in July, I believe, to try to do a late planting of uh, Egyptian wheat. And it was just a complete fail because it was such a drought, we could not hunt, or it just wouldn't grow. So it failed. So we had no Egyptian wheat to screen in our food plots. At that point, I was like, you know, it's better off that we just didn't have food plots. But we kept them there, nothing we could do about it. Is what it, it is what it is. So then, get rid of that, we kept the food plots there. Over the spring and summer, actually in the winter, we came back in here in this ridge top right here, this is a ridge, and we did a bunch of cutting. And we opened it up to the canopy, we had a lot of regrowth back in here. All through here was, was, uh, was a lot of bedding, a lot of deer activity back in there. Um, we did some cuttings in it, and we actually put a, uh, a water hole back in there, somewhere right in there, and we had a, uh, a tree stand back here as well. That, that green is a tree stand, blue is a water hole. All that red squiggly stuff is uh, some cuttings we did. Now here um, we, had a, uh, we had a tree stand right here, which was the creek crossing stand. We had one here. We had one here, we had one here, and we had one here. 
The reason being was that right there where those four stands are in the front next to the food is there was a ridge, there's a ridge there that drops down and there was a huge trail um, that went across there a little bit. So we actually enhanced that over the summer. We came through this trail. I'll show you here. This over here was all bedding. This was all bedding. Okay. Well, that quickly went away because we didn't realize the neighbors over here were hunting on the edge and it just messed it all up. So our travel corridor went from here, here, it crossed over this gas well line and it went back into here and then the deer would travel through this creek crossing over into here and they would go up into here. This was the same way. There, there was a trail here that went back like this and kind of went back like that. So I wanted these this travel corridor um, enhanced. So we came through this all through this travel corridor. We sprayed it with glyphosate all spring and summer long to kill any vegetation. We actually hinge cut some trees all through there um, and all that stuff. And uh, it worked it worked out pretty well. Um, we had a lot of deer coming from the neighbors onto our land over this way. And we had a lot of deer that was back in here. Um, we had a lot of deer coming through here on this creek crossing stand. And we basically left this center alone. We didn't really hunt it much. Um, Zach only hunted the stand back in the back where the water hole was like once. I never went back there. Um, because you just you couldn't access his property. There's there's it's just a lease property. I can't do what I want to it basically. So it's just a lease property. Um, we can't manipulate it the way that I would have to manipulate it to access. So mainly, we uh, we did have a water hole right here, right along that travel corridor, and I did a bunch of cuttings here to prevent deer from accessing off the neighbors here. I blocked this off basically so they would have to come through here and either go this way on the travel corridor or go this way on the travel corridor. So once I did that, the deer were using the travel corridor and then early season, we did not have much success. Um, we realized the property, we had a lot of summer bucks in there. And after that, we had um, issues with some, we had some trespassing issues that were going on and I believe people were actually baiting. Um, you can't bait there. So it just kind of messed the whole thing up. We couldn't access the stands without spooking the deer off the food plots. So basically um, it, it, is, it was what it was. So after Zach hunted the rut, seen some deer, he actually, he actually shot a buck there with his bow during the rut. Um, I came, I basically, the property rested for about three or four weeks. Now, when you do these types of habitat improvements, like the trail, the water hole, you know, the cuttings and stuff like that, you may not see instant success with it. You know, deer have to get used to that, you know, that, that those habitat features. And just because a deer doesn't use them right away, it's not that it's a fail. They just, it, sometimes these things takes time. You know, you're adjusting the area, you're changing things, you're cutting trees, the deer have to get used to them. So basically the wood, the, the place rested for several weeks and then I came in open and gun season and I hunted right here, right along this travel corridor, right? And during the summer, you know, these bucks and this specific buck, this 210 buck that we were hunting was using this travel corridor, okay? He was using it. He was all through here. He was going this way. He was back in the back. He was using those features. Then he disappeared, right? Hunting pressure. You know, food sources changed, acorns might have been dropping some or whatever it was, but it changed. So I knew eventually, since that buck was using these travel corridors, he would come back. Usually when they use them in the summer, they come back in the fall at some point, whether it's during a rut or late season, whatever it is. So I hunted this stand right here, and sure enough, 210 came, uh... He came walking right down this trail, came right out, boom, I shot him right there, and he died right here.
died right there. He came walking right through on the travel route that we made, and I killed him with a 243, a Savage 243. So that's how this all came about. That's how we set the property up. Um, we're unsure if I'm going to lease it again for the next for the following year, just because of poor access. There are some things that you know we can try to do a little bit different. And with this, if we can screen in these food plots a little bit without the farmer killing them again, I think it'll be a lot better because then you could just hunt the ground blinds. You could have like two, two or three ground blinds in this Egyptian wheat hunting these food plots and uh, you would never have to enter the woods. So that's the setup that we had. Um, this, I'm curious to see what this is going to look like coming in next spring and summer, like, you know, the cuttings. I probably will do some more cuttings in here somewhere um to increase uh some bedding um that's about it guys that that's what i did that's what i did to kill 210 um do these habitat features and just because you don't see that right away give it time if you see bucks on trail cameras that are using the features give it time they will be back if they disappear leave the place unpressured and they will use them any questions drop a comment down below and um i'll see you guys on the next video good luck this season Thanks for watching this video guys. If you want more information on food plots, soil samples, and habitat management, click this video right here on the screen. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you guys are new.